Hey, is this where we buy those super frog videos? Yeah, you bet. And it's live from Minnesota with Super Frogs 2. The little froggy with the E-ring and the mega. Yeah, buddy, that's his own hair. The little froggy got his own jet airplane. The little froggy is a millionaire. We got to install microwave ovens. The kitchen delivery. We got to move these refrigerators. We got to move these color TVs. That ain't you working. That's the way you do it. Get your money for nothing in a chicks for free. Get your money for nothing. Get your money for nothing. Six for free. In the end, it's only the beginning. Video number one's over, and we're on to Super Frog Collector Series video number two. Tonight, we're going to teach you a lot of uh, unique techniques, ideas, and concepts and philosophies. But if you remember, in video number one, we showed you a basic, simple process, and that was how to price your lettering according to a three-tier process. And in the beginning, we showed you that plain any color consists of approximately $30, airbrushed was approximately $50, and airbrushed and shaded was approximately $75. We're going to elaborate on that concept again one more time. By showing you a couple of new techniques, you will be able to increase the cost of your basic vinyl lettering. Technique number one that we're going to show you tonight is commonly referred to as bubbles. The bubble banners is a classic example of a finished product without any extra uh, detailing to it, such as black outlines and so on and so forth. But it goes to show you how effective the bubble pattern technique is when applying it to your signage. This could very well read antiperspirant, slippery frogs, pools, and so on down the line. We're going to show you how to make a bubble look, an actual wet look on vinyl that's applicable to any surface, such as cars, uh, planes, trains, banners such as this, and so on. And then we're going to move on from there, and we're going to move into another area. We're going to show you how to do the splatter technique on vinyl. The the thing about the bubble pattern or the bubble technique is that it's quite simple to do, but at the same time it has a series of steps or processes that you actually have to go by. You have to abide by these steps in order to make the process work successfully. To give an example, the steps consist of approximately seven different points. In order to do the bubbles procedure, such as this letter R that you see here, is number one is that you pre-cut the vinyl. I want you to understand that you can actually cut the vinyl after the processes are done, but unfortunately you accumulate a lot of product onto the vinyl surface and when you put it back into the computer, it has a tendency to be a little bit more messy. So therefore, pre-cut your vinyl, step number one. Number two is you have to apply your water to the actual vinyl. By applying your water to the vinyl, you set the stage for creating the bubble look. Number three is you have to spray the paint. Now, the paint that we're going to use this evening is the same paint that we used in video number one. We're going to stick with the Krylon. And remember that the primary reason that we use the Krylon, and only Krylon, is because the Krylon has MIBK or MIC and MEC in it. Methyl ethyl ketones or methyl isobutyl keybones. Those are the two chemicals that make the Krylon physically bond to the vinyl. Now, step number four is the process that takes the longest. Step number four, you have to allow the water to evaporate. And by allowing the water to evaporate, you cause the paint that is on top of the water bubbles to physically lay down on the surface and lay onto the vinyl. Once you've done that, then you go to step number five. Step number five in this case is we're going to clear coat with Krylon Clear. 
The reason we're going to use Krylon Clear is because the Krylon Clear, once the water has evaporated now and gone away, is to pin the bubbles down and to pin them into place. Because if you don't do that simple process, the bubbles can be easily disturbed and you'll lose the illusion or the effect that you're after. Once you've clear coated with the Krylon Clear, then you have to let that dry, which is approximately 10 to 12 minutes. Then you move on to step number six. And at this point, you're going to clear coat with the Superfrog 7000 Sunscreen Clear. The 7000 Sunscreen Clear has a, I mean, a sunscreen inhibitive in it, and this will allow the colors to stay steadfast, plus it gives it the toughness and the durability that you need for exterior application. Once you've done number six with the clear coat from the Superfrog 7000 Sunscreen Clear, then you move into step number seven, which is weed and apply. Now when you do step number seven, you will find that it's a little bit more difficult to weed than it is when you do your basic vinyl. But then of course we've done a lot of trick things to the vinyl. So you have to hunt and seek and eventually you'll find the edge and so on and so forth that you're looking for. And whenever you cut your vinyl, you pre-cut it, use the border mode. Because then it gives you a definite line when you cut away from the edge of the vinyl and you pull it, it gives you a definite registration so that you know where to start weeding your letters from. And again, this process isn't necessarily done on little teeny two inch high letters. Its primary function is on letters of three inches or greater. Average, let's say, six to 12 inches. Now, just to give an example of some of the things or the effects that you can achieve using the Krylon over water on the vinyl, this particular banner was done in a matter of a half an hour to an hour using a special process that we use in order to dry the particular water. Now, what I have learned doing this process is that you have basically three different choices in getting to water to evaporate. For instance, going back to step number four, the water has to evaporate. The reason that that's an important step is because that's what takes the most time and consumes a lot of your time in your shop. So what you learn to do is you will learn to apply the water or do this particular task in the evening before you go home from work. Well, let's, let's say you quit at 5, do it at 4.30. Then by the time you leave, when you come back in the morning, it's ready for step number 5, which is the clear coating with the Krylon. Once the Krylon has been applied to the vinyl, then you go and use the Superfrog 7000 Sunscreen Clear over the top of that, and you finalize the process. So in the morning, you probably have another half an hour to an hour with finishing touches plus drying time. Now, once you've done that, you can take and make many different types of designs and so on and so forth in regard to making your vinyl in many different colors. To give an example, we did this word that you see right here. This particular word was done on Arlon's Kalon 2 High Performance Vinyl. The bubble pattern was done on it, and then we finished it and did the process throughout. One of the things I want you to understand that when you're doing the bubbling technique, you don't necessarily have to stick with just one color in the same bubble pattern. You can change your colors by starting, let's say, here with green and blue, and then here we went to orange and blue, and then here we went to kind of a golden sunset orange and blue. And Here's where you use the colors fluorescent orange and fluorescent yellow together, and it gives you a very bright, colorful color combination that you can put over, let's say, blue or some other type of uh, darker color background. It's a very pretty combination. This is a fine example of when you blend a orange or warm color from the bottom up. You're still doing the same blend technique when you do, like in video one, across the bottom of the letters. And yet the only difference is that your bubbles will change colors. This color combination is fluorescent pink with blue sprayed at 180 degrees opposite. This color combination was taken one step further. We used the fluorescent pink again, and we used the blue, but we also bumped it with red on the backside of the blue bubbles. Therefore, we get a blue, red, and fluorescent pink blend. This particular piece was done using purple vinyl. The reason I want to show you that you can use purple vinyl or other colors of vinyl is that you don't need to start with white every time. 
In order to do this, I was trying to achieve a moonscape, or like you're on the planet Mars. I used fluorescent pink from one direction, and then I shot white Krylon from the opposite direction on purple vinyl. And it's so effective that you still think that it's wet, but yet when you rub on it, you realize that it is all dry. I saved this one for last, of course, because it's my favorite. Of I use fluorescent yellow with green and teal blue. But the primary reason this is my favorite is because it looks like frog skin. Let's go back to the original seven steps of doing bubbles. We will begin now with each individual step and move through the whole process so that you better understand how to do it because it's important that you follow each and every step and you do it with a consistency. If you don't, you'll have a lot of variables in your product, in your finished product. I've already experimented, I've eliminated a lot of the problems, and I have found that this particular system, one through seven, works the best. So let's start with number one, the bubbles procedure, one, pre-cut the vinyl. What I have done for you already is I have taken the Arlon's Kalon 2 High Performance Vinyl and I have pre-cut it. I've cut the letter S in here, just for simplicity. It doesn't make any difference if you do a letter or you do the whole word, but you have to pre-cut your vinyl. I find it's much simpler to pre-cut it than it is to go back in and cut it afterwards because the buildup of the product, the Krylon, the paints, the clears, and so on, gets to be rather thick, and there are variations in the thickness, so by pre-cutting it, it makes it a much simpler job in the long run. So, number one, we have pre-cut our vinyl. Number two, we have to apply our water. Now, the water that you use can be your regular tap water. The only thing that I have noticed is that when we're using tap water directly from the taps in your house or your business or whatever the case might be, some cities will have a little more fluoride in them or some will have some different stuffs in it and so on. And I refer to them as contaminants. And they have a tendency to pinpoint or coagulate into the center of the bubble when they dry. And you can eliminate that totally by using distilled water, but it's really not that big of an issue. It's not that much of a problem. So the very first thing you do, pre-cut the vinyl, you lay it on your surface that you're going to do your finished product on, and then you go get yourself some water. In this cup, I have plain tap water right out of the sink in the house. There are various methods or ways with which you can apply this water. You can make this a religious experience if you'd like. You can take your fingers in here and go almond the biscuits and you can just kind of flick it around on there and so on. The thing you have to be careful of is you don't want the great big honking bubbles because they take a real long time for them to dry. So what we want to do is we want to accumulate a standard size bubble, let's say a quarter of an inch in diameter and as many of them as we can get. I have found that the best method for applying the water to the vinyl and achieving that look is as follows. Once you've done that process, it works rather well. It gives you a nice set of about quarter inch size bubbles. You have to use water in order to do your bubble technique. You can't use alcohol, you can't use uh, oils, you can't use anything else that would contaminate the bottle, I mean the vinyl. The primary reason that you can't use alcohol, especially if it's about, let's say, 100 proof, is it's really tough on the guy that blows it on there because after a little bit of vinyl, he's laying on the floor anyhow, so it doesn't work real effectively. You can't use isopropyl alcohol because it flows and it spreads out evenly. You can't do it with the alcohol added to the water because, again, it causes it to flow out. The best method, as I said earlier, is the blast method. Once we've achieved the splatter technique onto the vinyl, at this point, we now apply our spray. Again, going back to our steps. We are in number three. You spray the paint. Again, <coughs> we're going to use the Krylon spray paint, and it has to be the Krylon. And again, of course, the Krylon sticks to the vinyl. Now, let's say, for instance, that we're a painter. Let's say that as a sign painter and a letterer, I have a four by eight panel and I've painted it with lettering enamel. What I do there is I physically paint the sign with the lettering enamel. The sign becomes sticky and tacky. You blow your water onto it and you can physically do it on a vertical surface with paint. And then when the water bubbles stick to the paint, 
there's retention there. There's actually cling between the water and the paint. And then you can airbrush it or spray real enamels all over the bubbles and everything else. As the bubble dries and the water dissipates, the paint underneath of that bubble is still wet. So what happens is as it dries, the paint on the bubble stays tacky and eventually the two of them bind and stick together. Now, on a painted surface, that's great. Solves your problems. You don't need all the fancy gizmos and so on and so forth, and you have the durability instantly. But when you're working on vinyl, the vinyl is already dry, and it has a slick surface. So by having a slick, smooth, dry surface, once we put the water onto there, and we put the Krylon paint onto there, wherever there isn't any water, the paint sticks instantly and dries. Wherever there's water, the paint will physically stick to the water, but it also dries on the water. So now, as we apply the evaporation process, which again is step number four, okay, the water has to evaporate. When the water evaporates and lays down, this paint is already dry. There's absolutely no retention or no way or the chemicals in the paint to physically bond to the vinyl. So we have a very delicate situation at that time. Let's back up again just a little bit so that you don't get, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves here. Let's review what we've done so far. We're using the high performance vinyl, the Kalon 2 from Arlon. We've pre-cut that vinyl. Now we're going to go to step number two where we've applied the water using the blast method and using your mouth. It's the best one that you can use. It makes the best splatter technique that we need. Don't eat a donut before you do that. Number three is spray the paint onto the vinyl. So what we'll do is we'll take the Kryolan spray paint at this point, shake it and agitate it just like before, get it started on a surface next to it, and then when you shoot across your vinyl, again, shoot it at 180 degrees to the surface, or 90 degrees, I'm sorry. And you can see that it, this immediately establishes the bubbles on the vinyl. And this also helps pin them down. And then once you've done that, then you can come back from the other side. Now you can physically very carefully rotate the piece of vinyl after you've sprayed it with the one color. And then you can come back from the other side with another color. In this case, we'll use a little black because it'll give us some good contrast. And you just bump the other side and the bubbles just jump at you. Now, the only problem that we have here is we're into the evaporation stage, indicated as step number four, okay? The water has to evaporate. Now, this is what really takes the time. And again, I want to emphasize to you, if you're going to do this technique, it's best that you do it in the evening before you go home. Or, if you're in a hurry, which I always am, and in my shop, I have an evaporation process that I speed up very fast. And the way I do that is I take a piece of 18-gauge aluminum and I lay it off on a couple of saw horses and I, or a table with a two by four so you can get air underneath of it. I do all of this process on top of that and then I place a heater underneath of it. A little electrical space heater is all you need. Aluminum being the number two conductor of, a, of heat will cause the heat to wick out into it and it becomes like a stove or a platened on a stove and it physically cooks the moisture out in approximately half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour maximum. So what you've done is you've accelerated the process. Now, once you have the water evaporates, you have to clear coat it with your clear Krylon. In order to speed this process along for you, I've created some other pieces. For instance, this piece, the water has already evaporated on it, and the bubbles are just laying there. But if I were to rub on them hard, I could disturb them and move them around, which I wouldn't want to do. So we're at step number five right now. We're going to clear coat with the Krylon. So we'll take the Krylon Crystal Clear, the 1301 Krylon Crystal Clear, and we will physically spray across the vinyl, and you lay on a nice, wet, heavy surface. And you just keep going all the way back and forth, and you kind of read it in the light. I find that that works the best. Now, once you've got that sprayed all the way across there, and you can see it kind of flow, and you overlap each spray stroke about 50%, then you're done with it. Now the nice thing about the Krylon Clear is it takes about 10 or 15 minutes for it to dry. 
which is really to your advantage because it speeds the process right up. Now, once this is dry, and one of the things, again, that I do in my own shop is I will speed this process up by using a hairdryer. You bump it with heat and just back away from it, it dries in five minutes. So once you've got the Krylon clear onto it, you go to step number six. Now step number six, and again, I have another piece of vinyl that I've already clear coated with the Krylon that is dry. It's dry to the touch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to step number six. Step number six is where you clear coat with the Superfrog 7000 sunscreen clear. The reason we use the Superfrog 7000 sunscreen clear is because this is an extremely durable product for outdoor usage. It goes over paint, goes over vinyl, goes over the Krylon on the vinyl, it goes over a lot of different substrates and solves a lot of your adhesion problems, but it gives you the durability for outdoor use simply because it has a lot of sunscreen in it. Sunscreen block. The same thing you use if you're out sunbathing. Now, the best way to apply the Superfrog 7000 sunscreen clear is to use a foam brush. You take the foam brush and you dip it into the product, get your brush saturated, and then you just brush it on in the following manner. And what I usually recommend is you go up and down and so forth, and then you go back and forth one time to make sure you don't have any holidays. In other words, holidays meaning blank spots, places you didn't get it. And then I usually look into the light, and then I will lightly stroke it back and forth one more time. Once you've done this, without any heat or anything to cure the process will take about 15 minutes to half an hour to dry and you can weed it and apply it at that time. Or you can use heat on it and accelerate the process, the same heat and the same piece of metal that you use to evaporate the water in the beginning. Now, let's say for instance that we have some situations arise and we achieve an undesirable effect. For instance, Let's say that the water has evaporated or you disturb the water bubbles before they totally evaporate. What you will do is you will create a situation for yourself that, quote, you'll say, oh, God, it's not as desirable. It doesn't look as neat because it's not the real bubbled effect. But never fear, because what you're actually going to do is we will accelerate that process. We just did this a few minutes ago. The water definitely has not evaporated. But what you do is you take an absorbent paper towel and you just lay down over the top of it and just slightly run your hand on it. And what it does is it wicks all the moisture into it. And you can physically get the bubbles to dry quicker that way if you're very careful. Now, if you'll watch, again, I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to just lay it down and then just lightly pat it and it's going to suck up the water. Now, taking another paper towel and physically wiping on it and removing the water, you'll notice that the Krylon is physically dry on the background of the vinyl, but wherever the bubble was, we now have white dots. In reality, you've ruined it, and it doesn't have the same effect that this does over here. But this is very usable. Because actually, once the water has all evaporated and totally dried, and if you want to, you can go back with a third paper towel and make sure all the water is gone. And then you have your options of either leaving it like that, calling it moonscape, uh, leopard skin. If you use black and yellow, you can actually make leopard skin and so on. Or you can come back in here now when the vinyl is dry and activate those with another color of Krylon. Still saving the job, but creating an entirely different illusion. So in reality, when you think you've screwed it up, you can actually make something good out of it. So we will do it again by spraying it like this. Now what we have is we have orange dots. And if you want to, you can change those to another color. Let's try, uh, let's try a little plum over here. Just by doing this, it tones it down so those dots aren't quite so popular, I mean so, so bright and so forth. And you can see we're still saving that. It still can be utilized. Once that dries now, this we can just go ahead and apply our Krylon Clear right over the top of it. And then once that dry, we can put our Superfrog 7000 Sunscreen Clear over the top of that and still utilize it just like we did before. Now, later on, when this is dry, we will weed it.
Let's quickly review the seven steps again so that you understand completely what it is we're doing with the bubbles technique. Number one, the bubbles procedure consists of the pre-cut final. Again, always use the high performance final. It gives you much better results and you will not have any difficulties and it'll work for you very well all the way to the end. Number two is we have to apply the water. Remember the best method for applying the water is the blast method using your mouth. I've tried sprayers, I've tried the omelet hibiscus, I've tried the religious techniques, I've tried all the different techniques. Blowing it with your mouth gives you the best distribution and the evenness of the bubbles than anything I've tried. Number three is you have to spray your paint. Remember that you spray color number one, which is usually a light color, from the right hand saying, and color number two is sprayed at 180 degrees and usually is of a contrasting color. For instance, white and black, orange and, yellow, orange and red, and so on down the line. Then you have to clear coat with the Krylon. And the Krylon is your vehicle with which you pin the bubbles down to the vinyl. Because if you don't pin the bubbles down to the vinyl, and so on, using the Krylon will give you only so much durability. To give you an example, having sprayed this with Krylon, if I were to go in here now and attempt to transfer this with just the Krylon on it, I would create myself a whole new batch of problems. To give an example, all you have to do to do a test is you physically squeeze you down a piece of application tape, and then if you lift it off, you can see that your technique or your pattern physically is on the back of your application tape. Now, even though we have destroyed the bubble pattern on this side of the vinyl and so on and so forth, and it's now been transferred to the application tape, don't despair. This is still salvageable in the fact that you can take a piece of clear vinyl, lay over the top of it and rub it with your fingers, physically pick it up and apply it to a transparent surface, and you will now have bubbles on that surface that you can see right through. So even though you've screwed up, in reality, you've created a new situation for yourself. So it's extremely important that you go to step number six in this procedure. For instance, once you're done with the clear Krylon, all that's doing is holding things in its place so that you can brush it with the 7,000 sunscreen clear. And again, the 7,000 sunscreen clear does two basic things for you. Number one is it pins everything down, makes it stick to the vinyl, and number two is it gives you the durability. For instance, if you look at the detailed part, this part has Krylon clear on it only. And if you'll notice that the bubble centers, a lot of it has disappeared or is gone, and the application tape will pull that off in the process because it's not real durable. But when you apply the 7000 sunscreen clear over the top of the Krylon, you can see that the center of the bubbles and the color stays permanent. Now, once you've completed step number six, we're ready to do step number seven. And at this point, you have to weed the vinyl. Now, you have a lot of buildup on here, and it's really difficult to see your lines and so on, and I usually recommend that you use the border mode when you cut your vinyl. Because then what you can do is you can go digging around in a corner, and then you can find a corner, and once you have the corner established, then you just weed your vinyl like you would regular vinyl. It will weed a little bit more difficult than regular vinyl because you've got to realize you've built this up now. You're probably up to three mils and so on in thickness. But it does weed nice and clean and so on. And if you do have any problems where it sticks in the corners or whatever, which is where it usually will, just take your knife and run it through that cut and clean it up and it will weed properly. And there you are with your finished product. At this point, you could apply your application tape. Like for instance, you use transferite application tape over the top of the vinyl letter you transfer it to your substrate or your job, and then again, use your wrap attack over the back side of the application tape. So that way you have less tension on the surface and you won't pull out any of your centers of your bubbles. Now in this particular case, I applied it to a piece of blue high-performance vinyl. I took my white stabilo, and one of my fishes here, there it is. I took my white stabilo, and I physically drew the outline and the shape, the drop shade, and then you take your, your $2 computer and a little bit of software, and you physically cut that outline and so on, and this is the end result that you get. At this point, you pick this up with application tape, and you can apply this
to almost any surface or substrate that you want. For instance, we could physically apply this to a piece of corex. It works very, very, very well on corex. You can use colored corex or you can actually paint the corex and use it over the top of that. Or you can apply it to a banner surface. In this particular case, we're using the U.S. Banner Corporation's Regal Banner material. It also works very well over the Davies Corporation poly banners. Now, once you've applied it to these two surfaces, you use it just like any other vinyl letter that you've cut. But let me take you one step further than that. Let's say, for instance, that you wanted to do something other than just the letters. You wanted to do the background in order to stick your letters to it. In other words, you don't want bubbles letters, you want bubbled backgrounds. You could take the Corex, like this, in this case using white again, using the same products, the Krylon, using the water, and the exact same steps and techniques that we did on the vinyl, all seven of them, on the Corex, you can physically do the same exact thing. To give you an example, and let's quickly run through this. We apply the water. Number one is, we don't have to pre-cut it because it's already a piece of cut material or substrate. Number two is, we're going after the application of the water. Oops, a little too much. See, the nice thing is, is you can wipe it off and you can start over if you get too much water onto the surface. Now my atomizer wasn't working real well at that particular time. It was probably the donut that I just got done eating again. Cut. Blast technique, take two. We're going to apply water now to our Corex so that we can do the same exact technique. Remember now, what we're achieving is a bubbled background effect. And we use the same basic steps that we did when we're doing the vinyl. Of course, the only exception is we're not going to weed this and apply it. And we're not going to pre-cut it. So we're going to only do the five steps. First thing you do is you apply your water. Again, using that unique blast method that we've achieved, Once you've applied your water, now you go in and you apply your color. In this case, we'll give it kind of a beer look. And we'll do that by starting out with a yellow across it, like this. And that accentuates the bubbles. Now later on when this dries, we'll show you what this looks like. And again, I'm going to use the fluorescent orange. Because the orange is a part that gives it the real beery look. And it doesn't take a lot of paint. You just kind of blast it on a little bit and let it drift around. And then I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. And again, like I said earlier, if you're ambidextrous, you can just use your left hand. But I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. And then I'm going to come back with another color. Now, in this case, I'm going to use black. And the black is going to give it a really accentuated look. And then... You can just set this aside. And let it dry. Now, the neat thing about Corex is that the water evaporates and dries much more quickly on Corex than any other surface or substrate you use. The reason being is the Corex is hollow and has holes through it. It's very thin and it allows the air to go through it and it dries very quickly. So we'll set this off the side over here and let that dry. Now, a banner, such as the Regal Banner from the U.S. Banner Corporation, is an extremely good banner to work with for doing the same exact process. The reason being is that the material is non-absorbent, and it's not so slick, it has a little bit of tooth to it, so that the paint and everything grabs onto it. A different type of, uh, uh, a slick plastic type of banner material doesn't work as well because it's too slippery and it just kind of runs all over and it gets too brittle when you bend it, whereas this particular material does not. We're going to take a short break right now. We're going to move on to the next process in just a couple of minutes. Uh, hang in there. We'll be right back. Like you, we'll run like. 
Announcing from Frogco, the Froggy Kruger Weedomatic. Create miles of pinstripes with just one swipe. The Froggy Kruger Weedomatic will cut your weeding time to a fifth of conventional methods. That means more time with the family. Speaking of family, the Weedomatic is great around the kitchen. It slices, dices, makes julienne fries and bread. When was the last time you sliced bread this fast? Amazing! How about some sliced meat for that bread? Or sliced apples for the health nut in your home? Froggy Kruger's Weedomatic. It's not a miracle, it's not a Ginsu. It's Froggy Kruger's Weedomatic by Frog Co. Some restrictions may apply. Not available to minors or pre-med students. I'm a frog man. I'm a frog man. I'm a frog man. I'm a frog man. Okay, thank you very much there, the Needy Band. All right, we're back here to show you a technique number two. Technique number two is a splatter technique. It's a technique that was extremely difficult to do and to uh, make using just straight paint, but Krylon has produced a new product which is called Razzle Dazzle, as you can see right here in these cans. And the Razzle Dazzle is a webbing type spray paint that has all the basic chemicals that you have in the regular Krylon. And what it does is it allows us to make a multiple colored splattered technique on the vinyl and make it all the way into a finished product. The nice part about it is, is that you can do it very quickly. It speeds the process up to the point where it's only four basic steps and those four basic steps are like boom, 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 boom. So let's quickly do a sample piece right now so that you can see what the procedure is. Number one is we start out with our basic pre-cut vinyl. And what I've done here again is I have drawn on the vinyl to enhance the lettering so that you can see it here for the camera. Once you've taken the pre-cut vinyl and so on, you lay it down on the table like so. And you take your webbing paint and you shake it very well and agitate it. It says on the label here to agitate for approximately one minute and to get the ball rolling very well. Also, I found out if you heat the cans, it really webs crazy. But shake it very well, and then you get it started by spraying it until the color comes out. And then the further back that you hold it from the product, such here is the pre-cut vinyl, it makes a really nice splattering technique. So you just go like this a few times. And then if you want to, you can actually mix colors. For instance, I used a hot pink on there now, and we'll go to a purple. It comes in six different colors right now, and they all, they're all a fluorescent base type color or a hot color. Again, get it started, and then just do your splatter technique from the distance, like this. Now the nice part is, is that it dries rather quickly, just like the regular Krylon does. And usually what I will do in my shop is I will take my hair dryer or my heat gun and I will bump it to dry this and get this process done. Now, one of the things that I have done is I pre-did this piece so that it would be dry for the viewing audience. What I did here is I used the hot pink and I used the green splatter paint together. And then I used an additional color of fluorescent Krylon and I just sprayed the blend into it, just like I would if I were going to airbrush on the Krylon normally. It gives you a airbrush blended effect with a spatter technique into it. Once you finish this particular process and it's dry, then you immediately go to the Superfrog 7000 sunscreen clear. The clear, you don't need the Krylon clear now, you go straight to this product. You just take the foam brush which you've been leaving set in your can, and you can physically go and brush this onto the vinyl. Once you've completed that particular process, then you go immediately to step number four, which is weeding and apply it. To give an example, it weeds basically the same as regular vinyl. Again, it's a little bit thicker than usual, but you can see it doesn't weed too terribly bad. And then once you've got it weeded, this is what you have. At this point, you put your application tape onto the actual vinyl 
and apply it to either another substrate or to a banner material, to Corex, to the side of a vehicle or a van or a truck or whatever the case might be. And then the job is finished. One of the things that we will do a little bit later is we will physically apply this to a banner and we will hand paint an outline and a shade around that. To give an example of a whole word, we've cut the word super frog in this. It's approximately five inches high by 42 inches long. But the neat thing about it is, is to do this whole process on this particular piece is rather quick. You take your vinyl and you lay it out. You grab your razzle dazzle, agitate it again in the can, and then you do your actual technique. And you can control this. You'd be amazed at how well you can control this. You can actually go in different directions. So on, if you miss a spot, go back after it and hit it. Then take your next color and do the same thing. And you can really make a unique pattern. You can make it a little heavier in some areas if you want to, and a little bit less. Now, once you've done that, you can come back with, again, a fluorescent color, and we will airbrush an actual blend across the bottom of this. And it changes the whole perspective with which you do this. Now, if you're going to use this indoors, and you're going to use it in a mall or someplace like that, and it wasn't going to be a permanent sign that was going to last a long period of time, we could stop right here and weed it and apply it. But what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, and then we will apply our clear on top of it using the 7000 sunscreen clear, and then we will weed it, and this will be our final product. Now, what we will do is we will take and physically apply something like this to a banner, and then we will hand paint an outline in the shade so you can see the finished product. Once we've completed our project, we have the options now of applying it to our surface or our substrate. In this particular case, we chose a poly banner from Davy Inter. The poly banner allows you to apply all different kinds of surfaces and textures to it with paint prior to applying your finished product, such as this letter S. Now, if you have brush, caping, brush capability in your shop, it's real easy to pick up a quill, load it up with some chromatic lettering enamel, and then physically go in and outline and letter it. This is chromatic one-shot lettering enamel. The reason I use the lettering enamel is because it's very durable. It drives to most surfaces and substrates. The nice thing about this is that we now have Superfrog 7000 sunscreen clear onto this vinyl, and if the paint should overlap or get onto that vinyl, it's still durable because it will stick to the 7000 and not fall off over a short period of time, as would the lettering enamel on the vinyl direct without any pre-coating. And then once you've outlined the letter, you just paint your 45s in so that you get your three-dimensional look. You do have other options in that if you don't have brush capabilities in your shop and you have all vinyl and nothing else, you can always go to this and that you put your finished product onto another colored substrate, such in this case as black, and then once you've done this, you can physically pick it up and apply it. Now, you would normally use application to do this, application tape, such as transfer it to do this process. But because we're only dealing with the one letter, I'm just going to peel it off so that we can use it for a comparison. You place it down, and you apply it just like you would if you had your regular final letters. And in effect, you have the same exact thing both times. Once you've completed your weeding, apply your application tape. In this case, we're using the Transferite application tape, like normal, using your squeegee to squeegee it down like you would normal. In other words, the process is exactly the same the way you would apply regular vinyl letters. And then once you've completed that, 
you would remove it from your backing paper and you apply it to your substrate. In this case, we're going to use we're going to use a regal banner from the US Banner Corporation and so on so that we can do some painting on it afterwards. And then what you do is you line it up like you would normally. And again, you would squeegee it down, squeegee from the middle up, the middle down, and so on, and just keep that process going. And as you can see, you treat it just like regular vinyl. It's no problem. Once you've completed that, you can apply wrap attack to the back of the application tape. And this helps reduce the tension and eliminate any possibility of sucking bubbles off your vinyl. But by this time, after you've applied your 7,000 clear a couple of times or one time, you shouldn't have any difficulties. You can see the process is the same. It starts to change color, and then you slowly peel away the application tape. Once that's complete, you can take a paper towel and you can wipe off your stabilo lines and so on and so forth. We had a little bit of a failure in this particular spot. All you do now is you take Krylon and you spray it on the table and take your finger and dab into those areas and it'll hide that. Listen up, folks. The primary reason that we're doing these custom techniques on vinyl is so that you can charge a custom price for a custom sign. We're not doing just plain old vinyl anymore. That's out. Do the custom signs, do the custom tricks, and you get the charge four times as much as you did before. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me and ask me, and I'll be more than glad to help you in any way that I can. All right, who let that bird in here again? That thing has been bugging us all evening and so on. So, oh, oh. We'll see you in Super Frog video number three. Birdie did poop and fly away. <laughs> the little froggy with the e-ring and the makeup. Yeah, buddy, that's his own hair. The little froggy got his own jet airplane. The little froggy is a millionaire. Kitchen delivery. We got to move these refrigerators. We got to move these color TV. That ain't you working. That's the way you do it. Get your money for nothing. And it shakes the feet. Get your money for nothing. Shakes the feet. Get your money for nothing. Shakes the feet. Just do it one time and end it there. Did you record any of that? I did. Oh. Uh, do it one more time. The earring in the makeup. Yeah, buddy. That's his own hair. His only hair. <laughs> we, well, we can do that verse. Okay. The little froggy got his own jet airplane. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Let's see what else we can make him do. The Fly away. <laughs> it is not even my favorite dressing. Oh.